Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. We are pleased to be joined by Blaine Sisson of Mount Carmel High School out in Illinois. How's it going, man? Pretty good. How are you doing? Doing well. We're, uh, of course, we're getting ready for playoffs. Uh, you got a big game this week. Yes, um, sir. Yeah. I know uh, I know. last week did not work the way that you wanted, but uh, yeah. overall heading in with a lot of confidence. For sure, yeah. I mean, we got a, we got a good team in front of us, so. We're focused on that right now. So going into this season, like what, like talk about some of the goals that you set. Um, so I'll, I'll start with my personal goals. Um, so last year, um, I uh, I was all first team all conference, and I I thought I deserved all state, and um, I didn't get it. And so kind of going into going into this year, I was like, I'm gonna get all state. I'm gonna I'm gonna get an offer. I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to get all conference again and all these like little goals that I set for myself to achieve throughout the season. And I think, uh, I think I'll be able to get there. I mean, I've put up some, put up some nice numbers and of course, shout out to my line, shout out to my receivers, but um, yeah, no, I, I mean, all state, all conference. Um, I lead the conference in uh, rushing and passing right now and total touchdown. So that was pretty much my goal. And we, we checked off a few along the way. Yeah, man. Um, really just talking about everybody that's kind of makes this all possible. Like, um, just talk about like the bond that you have with the line and the receivers. What if, what if you kind of, you know, it's all the stuff that you do off the field that kind of. Oh, for kind of sure. For sure. Um, so, and everybody, every quarterback has different ways of connecting yeah. with people. How, how, what some of the ways that you, did you connect with some of your teammates? Um, so all, all of my, my five linemen, um, um, besides like there might be two, we have like our friend group and I mean, it's conjoined of, of our, our line, our receivers, myself, our running back. Um, we all hang out, um, like, like for today, for example, and pretty much every day throughout the week, me and I drive me and my, one, our, one of our best linemen to launch every day, like we're best friends. And it's just like, we, we, we emphasize family. Um, we're we're kind of we're a family out there and we all play for one another and and if you're not if you're not holding your part you're gonna hear about it and don't like we kind of have the don't get upset about it we're just looking out for what's best for you yeah for sure just kind of talk, just kind of talk about like you know the approach of you know becoming friends and all that I mean you guys want to have the same goal off the field but it does help that you know you guys know each other throughout outside of football how big is that it, it's huge um we all kind of grew up together growing up in a smaller town um you grow up together you know uh you, you know each other and you know what, what what one another likes and you grow up from playing seventh and eighth grade football to going into high school and i mean here in mount carmel we got a rich tradition and it's kind of something we've always looked forward to you know like getting that varsity jersey as a freshman and now i mean we're, we're trying to win a state championship together you just kind of you just you when you have a lot of things in common it kind of goes off the field also yeah when you talk about some of the things that you guys have been able to do with the season that you've had I mean obviously it's like you don't want this to end and oh, yeah no for sure well I mean what 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 do you think the biggest thing is leading on success with with your team um it, it definitely starts with leadership um going going into this year um I knew I'd have to take in a bigger leadership role I mean only being a junior guy there's those senior guys who are big leaders on our team but kind of being that guy everybody looks to in the huddle when something's going wrong you just gotta you gotta make sure everybody stays calm um I mean everybody like, like I said I think I mentioned it twice already, everybody holds each other accountable and if if there's a day where someone looks like listen like you're, you're having a bad practice. Like I get, you don't want to be here today and you'd rather be doing something else, but listen, you have to be here either way. So if you're going to be here, give it your all. And it all comes back to holding each other accountable. Let me ask you just, you know, a couple of questions about yourself. What drives, you? what drives you to be successful? <laughs> uh, that's, that's a good question. Um, so growing up, I always wanted to play division one football. And it's like, that's my goal. Um, so I had not always lived in Mount Carmel. I mean, we, we were from here, but we moved away. And it was always like, I want to play Division One football. I want to play Division One football. And 
I was good. Like I had that stage growing up where I was good and it was, it was possible. But, and then I had that, that little, like going through kind of puberty stage. I was like, dude, I'm slow. Like, I don't know if I'm as good as, as what I think. And then, you know, getting into high school, it's like, listen, like I, I made, I made a promise to my, my, my family that like, you're not going to have to pay for my college. And that's kind of what pushes myself. You know, I know it's been a pretty tough few years, you know, with football and stuff, just, you know, not having to worry about anything, you know, regarding, I know, as the country starts to come, as countries now coming out of the pandemic and all that stuff, mm -hmm. how big is that to have just not have to worry about any of that that you had to worry about the last two years? Oh, uh, it's, it's a great relief off your shoulders knowing you can go into a Monday not having to bear bad news from your coach. Oh, this team forfeited because they have COVID. And it's it's last year that happened to us two or three times. And um, I mean, last year on a Thursday, one of our pregame practices, it's like, all right, we all have to get tested for COVID before the game. And it's like, oh, well, I have a runny nose right now. What if I'm missing out on one of my games? Like, I only get some in high school games. And it's just like, it's a relief, like off your shoulders pretty, much, pretty well. Um, how do you mentally prepare for a game? You know, I, I usually usually put the headphones in, um, turn on turn on some Drake, turn on some Kanye. I mean, sorry, Kanye, I know everything you're going through right now, but you still have <laughs> some good music. But yeah, I mean, kind of bump them a little bit, you know, talk to my guys. And usually, like, what kind of gets me going and gets the adrenaline pumping is thinking about possibilities that can happen in the game. And it's like, well, if this happens, I'm going to do this. And it's like you get that little flow of adrenaline. Like, All right, I'm ready to go play. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, going into going into this game it's just like you know do you just are you just like when when you're like ready before a game or during like a bus ride to a game is it like do you just want to be in you know your mental space and all that yeah um like everybody has their different like pregame rituals or whatever and like I'm just kind of like everybody kind of knows like all right like so say we have an hour bus ride to an away game and we're all like talking, messing around, and when like 15 minutes gets, you don't hear, like gets through there, you don't hear anything. Everybody's locked in. Like you're just like, all right, it's it's go time. And you get there and like you get off the bus, and the other team's looking at you because like you know like you're the team to beat. And it's like, yeah, like I'm here. Like it's, it's, that's kind of how I uh, think about it. Going to and going to a game. How do you how do you handle failure? Um, failure's failure's not a bad thing. Um, it, it you learn from it but at the same time I'll catch myself and for today for example I threw I threw a bad ball and I caught myself like just like I kicked the turf and I was like dude why are you doing this like learn from it you know what I mean and it's like it's okay you'll get over it I mean take the coaching take the criticism and you just move on and learn from it, become a better player um describe your personality off the field um if 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 I if I were to be hanging out with like one of my best friends, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a hard time. Um, that's just that's just me. I always joke around with my friends, and some people may not like that. They may not. They may think like, oh, he's he has like a he's a bad attitude when it comes to that. But it's like it just kind of jumps onto the field actually. If they like, oh, he he may have a bad attitude. It's like no, I just want to win more than you, and I'm in that, and I'm in that zone. And then like, but like you said, off the field. Um, I would just like I, I joke around all the time. I'm I'm pretty laid back unless like you know like it's some serious. I'm I'm serious in the moment, but I'm a pretty laid back guy. I joke around with my friends. Yeah. Um, what would someone describe you on the football field? Like some, what, what, give me some words that they would say about you. Um, I would say at, like an athlete. Um, because I mean, unselfishly or selfishly I should say I, I think I can do anything on the field and I think once I step on that field I'm going to be the best player on the field and I'm going to do what I can do to beat you um you know I know that it's you know it's winter go home last time I checked yeah. I don't think anybody wants to go home yeah no um, that's, that's for sure going into this going into this game do you get nervous before games um so in the in the regular season I don't really get nervous because like if if I go into a game nervous and scared to make a mistake, I'm going to make a mistake. And I was a little there's one game this year. I was nervous. We were playing a really talented kid out of Chicago. Um, 
uh, he was a his four star tight end with like thirty five offers, yeah. and I was I was man to man pressed with him, and I wasn't necessarily nervous about my performance. I was nervous about proving myself and proving that I could play with those highly rated guys. Yeah, but go, going into that, but playing that does that that could that could boost your confidence or that could wreck mm-hmm. your confidence because if you have a bad game like that, you don't know what could happen. Yeah, for sure. It's like. There was one play. I definitely had a humbling moment. Like, okay, this kid, this kid's about it. Um, he caught a little hitch on me, and I had him wrapped up. And he, I mean, he's a big. I'm, I'm a bigger dude, and he broke my tackle. Um, he was bigger than me. Don't get me wrong, but he broke my tackle. And then next drive, I'm like, all right. And then I went and got an interception on him. A man-to-man press. He ran a slant, and I picked it off. It's like, all right, I can play with this kid. And like, I, I think I proved it. And then we end up getting the win, and it was, it was great. I had, I mean, I had a total of nine touchdowns that game five rushing, four passing. It was just, it was just a great game. Yeah. You know, you know, you're a junior right now. So this is, yeah. a, this is a big year for you because, yeah. you know, this is the year that, you know, you can go get, you know, lots of attention, lots of things like that. For but, sure. Yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you handle, you know, trying to be successful, but, you know, not trying to get caught up in the moment? Um. I, I just kind of go – I go into everything as if it, it were my last game. Even if we're playing a team not as good, um, I'm going to go in, playing my playing my butt off. And um, this year it's kind of – I don't really have that big of, big of like, chip on – I still have a chip on my shoulder, don't get me wrong, but that chip on my shoulder because going to play college football, I I got that I got that offer last offseason. Um, I, I got a scholarship to play football at McKendree. And it was just like, okay, I kind of like achieved one part, but like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not satisfied. I want more. And I want, I want to be, I want to be where I think, I think I deserve to be on um, some of these ranked top guys that, and it's just like, I prove, I, I play to prove myself and play to prove that all like my, my guys are, are going to do everything they can to go get the win. Are you, are you an emotional guy when you're on and off the field? Oh, um, so it honestly like depends like I'll get I'll get caught up in my emotions um but if I do I don't really like to show it um if I'm upset I'll kind of just walk away walk away from the moment and it's just but like if that were like to be on the sideline say like I throw a pick and it's like oh dang like I go to the sideline and I'm like all right like watch look at the iPad what'd you do wrong and then but like if we're if we're on the field like I don't ever because like the guys look to me when something goes wrong and it's like well if they see me all pouty and sad then what are they going to do they're gonna they're gonna pout and be all upset. So that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Um. Like you know, it, it coming into this game, just just uh, obviously you're playing a really really tough opponent. Um, mm-hmm. um. What? Just kind of talk about going into this and what you feel like you what do you feel like you got to do to help your team win? Um. Okay. So going going into this game, we. Um, we know they're going to pass a lot. I mean, I play both ways, so I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to be on the field at all times for my team, um, even if I'm tired. I'm going to have to be out there. Um, no, I know they're going to. They're going to key on me. They have our film. They have my stats. Um, them, I mean, we made a deep playoff run last year, and I was a starter. They, I mean, I'm sure they know who I am. And they're. I mean, they're going to be keen on me, and I just got to push through that. And there may be a play where I get. I get hit pretty hard. I just got to get back up. Keep going. <laughs> okay so when you think back at look when you look at some of the things that you did um what what do you think your best game was what do you think that you know just what was the game that you really felt like you just put it all together um okay so the first the first few games um we uh we running we running clocks and teams so i got to play in a half and um so I, I played I played pretty good those games, and but come week eight we're playing uh, Marion Central Catholic from Chicago, and they have the four star tight end Christian Benker. He has all my praise. He's a great guy. He's a great football player. Yep, Christian um, was in the show this summer. Really? Yep. Christian's a great guy. Um, uh, you know, just talking to him on the field. But so I went to that game knowing I'm gonna have to have a big game, and we didn't expect for them to play cover zero like they did. It's like all right, I I mean I have 
I mean, another one of my best friends, Andrew Gillahan, he's out there playing receiver. Another one of my best friends, Gavin Smith. So we kind of have that connection. It's like I trust my guys to go beat their guys when they're playing them man-to-man. And, I mean, they beat their guys. They ran good routes. So I just got to give them the ball. But, um, no, I ended up I ended up throwing for 305 yards. I was perfect, 12 for 12, um, four touchdowns. And then I, I ran the ball 20 times for 151 yards and uh, five touchdowns. So I'd say that was my best game. And I had to play defense the whole time against Christian. He's big. He's a big dude. Um, yeah. So when you look at, like, how – to get right do you tend to like tra- like traveling to games um i don't know if it's at home or away if i'm not mistaken um at home yeah it's at home yeah yeah or, or first rounds at home yeah, yeah so let me ask this not having to travel for playoff games that's got to be a huge part because the, obviously that breaks up every you know big routine and all that stuff usually some of the away games are you know close by but when he gets to playoffs it kind of gets a little bit you know, you yeah, it stretches out for for sure. Um, yeah, no, playing playing at home is awesome. Um, you you haven't you obviously like you probably haven't heard of Mount Carmel, but Mount Carmel football has a great reputation, and we have the we have the cool stadium. But I'm a, I've, on, done my, I've done my research. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, no, but on top of that, um, the main thing is the community. It's I mean, playoff time. I mean, there's not a seat there's not a seat empty, you know what I mean? It's, it's packed and it's, I mean, nobody wants to play, nobody wants to play away at a packed stadium getting yelled at, like, you know, like getting, like our student section goes crazy. Um, They're always loud, but no, I mean, I think, and especially our, our football stadium, it's a hard place to play at for sure. It's like, you know, how do you have to going into this game, what do you feel like you you what do you feel like everybody has to do to get get it done um i think we all just need to do our parts honestly um we all if we all do our parts we're gonna win um if our line does their job we're gonna win if i do my job we're gonna win nobody needs to try to do too much and that's the thing about football that's so special is all 11 guys have to do their job to win and it's not like oh he's really good but what about the 10 other guys you know what i mean and it's just Everybody's got to do their job, like I said, defensively, offensively. Um, and I think if we do that, I, I mean, looking at the looking at our draw in the playoffs, I mean, we got a good draw. And, I mean, if we win this and the team we lost to last year in the semifinals before the state championship game, um, we play them second round. And, I mean, I'm eager to get back at them. For sure. All right. Well, Blaine, thank you so much for taking some time to talk with us, and good luck this weekend. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you.